Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. I am reading some excerpts from uh, a book by Watchman Nee called The Messenger of the Cross. May have done it before, probably will do it again. But I'm revisiting it because one of the assignment goals of Nancy McCready Ministries is to reproduce as many messengers of the cross. And to do that, of course, I can only do that which depends on me. And then others have to decide that they want to join in and do the same and to be a messenger. So I'm just simply reading some excerpts with comments here and there. And uh, so I encourage you to take hold of this because as we read Galatians, as in all of the episodes here on Tent Talk, we want to be those who go with him ourselves, that we enter in for ourselves, as Jesus said in Luke 11:52 in the Amplified Classic. And then we want to be a big open door for others to get to him. So here we go, my friends. Thanks for being on the podcast of Nancy McCready Ministries, Tent Talk. All right, here we are again, and I'm reading from the Messenger of the Cross. We left off last time where I stopped and it had been at the point where 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 4 had been quoted. So I want to back up, reread that passage, because the next part uh, refers to that passage of Scripture. So here it is. Quote, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Close quote. Again, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 4. So it continues on in the reading of chapter 1. In this passage, we can discern the outline of three things. One, the message which Paul preaches. Two, Paul himself. And three, how Paul proclaims his message. So let's continue into section one, the message which Paul preaches. The message which Paul preaches is Jesus Christ and him crucified. His subject is the cross of Christ or the Christ of the cross. He knows this one matter and nothing else. What a tremendous loss it will be to our audience as well as to ourselves if we forget the cross and do not make it and its Christ our one and only theme. I trust we are not among those who do not preach the cross at all. Hence, in the light of this scripture passage, our message and our theme may indeed be most correct. But do we not have the experience that despite the correctness of our message, we do not impart life to people? Let me tell you that though it is essential to preach the right message, our labor shall be half in vain if it does not result in people receiving life. We must underscore the point that the objective of our work is for people to have life. We preach the substitutionary death of the cross in order that God may grant his life to those who believe. What is the use if they are merely excited and moved to repent, even approving of what we preach, but their sympathy is only skin deep and the life of God does not enter into them? They are still unsaved. So our objective is not in inducing men only to repent or to have their mind influenced, but to impart the life of God to them that they may be saved. Even when we preach to the believer the deeper truth concerning the co-death of the cross, we must have the same objective in view. Now it is rather easy to cause people to know and to understand a given matter. 
It really is not hard to persuade people to accept our teaching in their mind. Believers and unbelievers alike, with some knowledge, can readily understand if the teaching is clearly explained to them. But for them to receive life and power and to experience what we preach, God has to work through us to dispense the more abundant life. We must never forget that all the works we do are for the purpose of our being channels of God's life for that life to flow into people's spirits. Therefore, in our having the correctness of both message and theme, we next need to make sure we are usable channels of God for transmitting life to other people. Section 2. Paul Himself The message Paul preaches is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he proclaims is not in vain, since he is a living channel of divine life. With the gospel of the cross, he gives birth to many. Yet in preaching the word of the cross, what about himself? He says this, quote, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, close quote. He himself is a crucified person. Let us see that it requires a crucified person to preach the word of the cross. Here, Paul has absolutely no confidence in himself. His weakness, fear, and much trembling, his looking upon himself as totally useless without any self-reliance, are the sure signs of his being a crucified one. I have been crucified with Christ, Paul once declared in Galatians 2.20. He further said this, I die daily, 1 Corinthians 15, 31. It takes a dying Paul to proclaim the crucifixion. Without the true dying of self, the life of Christ is not able to flow out from him. It is relatively easy to preach the cross, but to be a crucified person in the preaching of the crucifixion is not. If we are not crucified men and women, we cannot preach the word of the cross. No one will receive the life of the cross through our preaching unless we are so crucified. To speak quite frankly, he who does not know the cross experientially is not fit to preach the cross. Section 3. How Paul Proclaims His Message Paul's message is the cross, and he himself is a crucified person. In the preaching of the cross, he adopts the way of the cross. A crucified person preaches the message of the cross in the spirit of the cross. How often what we preach is indeed the cross, but our attitude, our words, and our feelings do not seem to bear witness to what we preach. Much preaching of the cross is not done in the spirit of the cross. Paul wrote to the Corinthian believers that he came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom when proclaiming to them the testimony of God. The testimony of God here refers to the word of the cross. Paul did not use lofty words of wisdom in proclaiming the cross, but came in the spirit of the cross. Quote, My speech and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Close quote. Such is truly the spirit of the cross. The cross is the wisdom of God, though to unbelieving men it is foolishness. When we proclaim the foolish message, we must assume the foolish way, adopt the foolish attitude, and use the foolish words. The victory of Paul lies in the fact that he is indeed a crucified person. He can therefore proclaim the cross with the attitude as well as the spirit of the cross. He who has not experienced crucifixion will not be filled with the spirit of the cross. And consequently, he is not fit to proclaim the message of the cross. Having seen the experience of Paul, does it not tell us the cause of our failure? The message we preach may be right, but let us examine ourselves in the light of the Lord, discerning whether we really are crucified men and women. With what kind of spirit, words, and attitude do we preach the cross? Oh, may we deeply humble ourselves in the face of these questions, so that God may be gracious to us and that others listening to us may receive life. Failure of people to receive life must be the failure of the preachers. It is not that the word has lost its power, it is men who have failed. 
Men have hindered the outflowing of the life of God, and not that the word of God has lost its effectiveness. People who do not have the experience of the cross and hence lack the spirit of the cross are unable to impart the life of the cross to others. How can we give to other people what we ourselves do not have? Unless the cross becomes our life, we cannot impart that life to others. The failure of our work is due to the fact that we are eager to preach the cross without that cross being within us. He who truly knows how to preach must have first preached the word to himself. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit will not work through him. The word of the cross, which we so often proclaim, is actually not ours, but is borrowed. It is gleaned from books or from searching the scriptures with our brain power. People with clever minds and those who are used to preaching are particularly prone to such danger. I am afraid that all their research, study, reading, and hearing talks on the mystery of the cross in its various aspects is for other people and not first for themselves. Consistently thinking of other people and neglecting our own lives will eventually result in spiritual famine. In delivering the message, we try to present what we have heard and read and thought in an earnest and thorough manner. We may speak so clearly and logically that the mind of those in the audience may seem to understand it all. Nevertheless, though in understanding they do understand, there is not that compelling power to cause them to seek after that which they understand. It is as if knowing the theory of the cross is for them enough. Because of us, they stop with the knowledge of the cross without proceeding on to obtain what the cross will give to them, that is to say, the experience of the cross. Or perhaps the preacher well knows the art of mass psychology, and so he speaks eloquently and earnestly. He may even advise the audience not to be satisfied with merely understanding what they have heard, but to seek for experience as well. Yet, though his listeners may be temporarily stirred, they nonetheless fail to receive life. What they possess remains theory. It does not become experience. Let us therefore never be self-satisfied, thinking that our eloquence can sway the audience. Although they may be stirred momentarily, let us realize that what they get from us are simply thoughts and words. Failure to impart life contributes absolutely nothing to men's spiritual walk. What is the use in giving people only thoughts and words? I pray this will penetrate deeply into our hearts and cause us to reflect on the vanity of our former works. As we have seen then, The two chief reasons for our not imparting life while preaching the cross are, number one, we ourselves do not have the experience of the cross, and two, we do not preach the word of the cross in the spirit of the cross. Wow, I do believe that is enough for today. You can see why it's so necessary sometimes to have the hard copy of the book with you, and to give God time to really speak to you about what does he mean. I pray that there's life coming through me to you. But that's because not of a special anointing or my eloquence, but because I have allowed the cross to plunge me. And therefore, he is able to pass on life that pricks the conscience, that stirs the person beyond the applause of the messenger. No pats on the back for the messenger. Oh, so focused on, oh, thank you. You're so eloquent. You just, uh, my friends, let us all say, Father, we want to be messengers of the cross. But we understand now that that does not just come by study and preparation and a well-organized lesson. It's just simply us allowing you to do the work in us and passing it on to others. So I pray that uh, this will provoke you today. Until next time. 
For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccready.com or follow her on social media at nbmccready.com.